Hello YouTubers and um, today I'm going to show you how to configure RetroPy on the RetroFlag GPI case and this is in association with my web uh, blog which the links will be provided in the video below. So let's get started. Um, first off uh, you'll probably need something to image uh, the uh, cards. So I use Bellina Etcher, uh, it's probably uh, one of the best things that will do the job uh, for what we need today and it offers downloads for Mac and for Windows etc. Um, today I'm using a Mac and I will do a video for Windows so we're just going to click um, download for Mac OS and uh, wait for that to, to download. You will also need the RetroPy for Pi Zero and um, so going to the RetroPy link we need to download the Pi Zero image here so I'm just going to click this. Again, links will be provided in the video below. And we'll also need the patches that will enable the audio, the video, and the button configuration on the GPI case. And that's provided by RetroFlag themselves. So we're going to click the download link here. So we should have a few downloads uh, working their way through. The safe shutdown and safe reset scripts will cover off um, further in the video, but for now we need to get the basics up and running. You will also need an SD card, a micro SD card, to fit uh, into the GPI um, piece of hardware, and also into the Pi Zero. And I'm using a Pi Zero W because it makes life a lot easier with the built-in Wi-Fi, uh, uh, so I can connect this up to the, the computer. Okay, now that we've got um, everything that we need downloaded, so we've got the RetroPie image, we've got the GPI case patch and Etcher. You'll need to install Etcher if it's not already on your system. So I'm just going to double click here. Um, I already have it, so I'm going to skip this uh, when it's finished, but you would just drag into the applications on the Mac or follow the installer on Windows. As I said, I'll do a separate Windows uh, version for this. So um, we're going to start up um, Etcher. Uh, so here we go. So I'm going to choose the image that we've downloaded, which is the RetroPie uh, 4510 uh, image here. We don't need to unzip it, so the GZ file is perfectly adequate. And we need to select a target. Select the target, so we have a look at what we've got here, and I'm using a 64 gig uh, micro SD card from Samsung. So I'm going to select this generic storage device. Make sure that you've got the correct drive or card selected. Click continue. And that will confirm here that it's 64 gig thereabouts. And then click flash. Uh, in my case, it asks for authorization to continue. And it will then start flashing the drive, as you can see here. It will once it's complete, it will verify the data that's been written to the card and automatically eject it from your system. So you will need to physically remove the card and put it back in again for the following steps. Okay, um, the flash is successful to the SD card and it's automatically ejected it, so I'm just going to put it back into um, my computer, into my Mac. And then we're going to need to do uh, some configuration work here. So first off is we downloaded the GPI case patch, as you can see here, GPI's case patch.zip. You'll need to unzip this, uh, so right click I think on uh, Windows an extract here uh, on a Mac. It's all taken care of for you by just double clicking it. And there's a, a README text and a GPI case patch. There's different ways of doing this. Uh, with Windows, you can drag the GPI case patch onto the memory card and uh, run the install batch and uninstall batch. But we're going to we're going to go old school, I think. So uh, I'm just going to bring up another window. So 
So here we've got, uh, you're looking for a partition or for a drive called boot. Um, this has got all the, the information uh, to start up the um, Raspberry Pi. Um, we're going to put in uh, the patch files into a folder called overlays. So, uh, so just change it like so. So if we look at the, the patch itself, we'll have the patch files. There's a config.txt that you can see here. Uh, that needs to be installed into or, or overwrite the config.txt in the boot partition. So we'll just drag this one over. And I want to replace it. I'm not interested in what the original was here. And then the overlays, we've got the audio and the, the video. So we're going to drag into the overlays folder over here. So it says that there's already a, an item named uh, DPI24. Uh, we're going to replace that. And that is job done. But of course, you're going to be able to want to be able to connect this to uh, your computer via Wi-Fi. So the next steps are a you need to create a file in the boot partition or straight in the root directory called SSH. So um, easiest way to do that is we'll just create a new file. And we don't need anything in it. I'll just put a space just to make sure that there, there is something. And I'm going to use save as. And then into boot, I'm just going to call this SSH. Now on a Mac, you're going to have to be careful about this. You can use um, text editor or notepad or notepad plus plus, whatever you, you prefer. But I'm just going to click save. And I'm going to delete that and I'm going to click save again. And then we can see here a file has been created called ssh.txt. So on a Mac, I'm going to press uh, Command I to uh, get info. And we can see here its name is ssh.txt. We just want it to be called ssh. So this is a unfortunate um, uh, helpful on Mac thinks it's being rather helpful, but uh, really it's not. So we're going to change its, its name and extension. So we're going to remove the .txt. And then we'll see here, we've got SSH. Now the next thing is you want to be able to configure your Wi-Fi. So we're going to create a file called WPA underscore supplicant dot conf for config. I've already pre-prepared this and it'll be in the blog entry. Uh, you'll need to change the country if you're US or EU or wherever you are, JP for Japan, etc. This line is important uh, for the control interface. So again, don't change anything here. The um, comments, the hashtags allow RetroPy uh, config to, to manage this um, within its own framework. Uh, if you don't, you'll have to manually edit it each time you, you want to change a network going forward. And then we've got network equals, and then we've got an open brace, and then the SSID, which is your network name. So replace your network name with your uh, Wi-Fi network, your SSID. The PSK, you need to replace that with your Wi-Fi password that you use obviously to, to connect to your router. Key management, WPA PSK, that's important to leave that in there. Now I found if you've got a network that is hidden, uh, you will need to include scan underscore SSID equals one. Uh, I don't think it hurts to leave that in there regardless, um, but without it, it won't find certain types of networks. And then all you need to do is save that to the memory card uh, into the boot directory. And we're going to call that WPA supplicant.conf. We're going to click save. And then I'm just going to double check that what we've got is a .conf and not a .txt, which we've got here, as you can see, quite nicely there. So what have we done? Let's recap. We've installed the RetroPie 
operating system uh, for the Pi Zero. We've enabled SSH, or it will enable SSH, and we've added our Wi-Fi uh, details, our connection details. We've also installed the um, configuration script, uh, which will be for the GPI, and the overlays as well. So once that's all done, um, you can eject the card uh, safely, and then we need to carry on with some configuration uh, via SSH. So if you haven't installed Pussy, now's the time to do it. Once the Pi is finally booted up, you'll need to configure the keyboard controls. So follow the configuring directions. So you've got your D-pad up, down, left, right. Um, you've got your start, select. The buttons A, B, X, and Y. Uh, so A is east, B is south, X is north, and Y is west. Don't forget there's two shoulder buttons or two buttons behind the console. Uh, something that I missed the first time round. Fill other controls you don't have the buttons for. You just simply press and hold an existing button until you get to the very last one, which is to do with the hotkey. Uh, the hotkey you want to have as the select button. If you don't select it, it will ask you to confirm. So just follow the instructions and um, we'll go on to the next part, which is to configure the safe shutdown script. Okay, so we need to find the IP address of the GPI. From that, we go to the menu of RetroPie, so tap left or right, and then tap down until you see the Show IP option and hit the A button. A script will run, and you'll see that the IP address is shown, and you'll see that it is 192.168.0.68 for my machine. It will be different for yours most likely so make a note of this address as you'll need this in the next stage now we know the ip address of the raspberry pi we need to connect to it using a terminal session or putty if you're using windows um, i'm using built-in terminal on mac so i'm going to issue the command ssh pi as that's the user at 192.168.0.0 68, which was the IP address we obtained from show IP or from the boot up logs as the Pi was starting up for the first time. So you'll get a fingerprint and I want to confirm that yes, this is the, the correct device. Um, so just type yes. And the password in lowercase is raspberry, R A. S P B E R R Y. And then we get up the standard usual startup message, which will give me some information about CPU temperature for and the GPU temperature. Also, how much uh, space is free, how much memory is free, um, so on and so forth. So I've got 12 gig available to install um, retro games. It also recommends that you change the password the first time that you go in, but I'm not going to do that for now. What we do need to do is install the safe shutdown script. So go to the uh, Retroflag website, uh, download.retroflag.com. There's the safe shutdown and safe reset. So you can click download here and it will take you to the GitHub repository for um, the safe shutdown script. But we're not going to need all of that. What we are looking for is this command line here, the wget minus capital O, letter O, and then the uh, git uh, address. So what we're all going to do is just simply copy, and I'll provide the link in the blog. Go back to our terminal session. I'm just going to paste. So we've got the wget command as uh, was provided and hit return and now we just simply wait for the script to install on the device
Now that the shutdown script is installed and the Raspberry Pi is rebooted, you'll probably want to set the Game Boy theme, um, which will make it a lot easier to see what's on the screen. So we need to go back into um, the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to SSH back in at Pi at 192.168.068. This time it's going to ask just for the password. So as before, Raspberry, all lowercase. And remember the commands should be lowercase as well. Once we're logged in, we can see again, we've got the standard startup bar barrier and we need to run a specific script. So we need to sudo tilde retropy setup, retropy setup dot shell script dot sh hit return. Now the speed of this will depend on your network connection, um, how the Raspberry Pi is connected to your Wi-Fi. It will take a few moments. Okay, so I'm going to move down to configuration and tools or press C. And then I'm going to move down to 813 ES themes. So hit return here. Now, then, there's a lot of things that you can do, install different themes, but what works best for the GPI is uh, this the following theme. which is here, uh, RX Brad GBZ35, or there's a GBZ35 dark. So I'm just gonna hit um, OK to install this theme. It will pull down the, the latest version from Git and install that onto your device. Okay, and now we can see here that it is indeed installed. And then to activate it, we'll do that through the GPI or directly on the, the games console itself. So we now select um, cancel. Back and exit. Or you can perform a reboot. And I'm going to drop out the Raspberry Pi and reboot the, the device and then enable the theme. To set the theme, um, press the, at the menu here, press the start button and you'll get the main menu. And then you want to scroll down to UI settings, hit the A button, and then keep clicking down until you see theme set. Press A. And there we'll see the newly installed GBZ 35, we select that. We can see that it's selected there. And now we can go and click back, like you say. Hit the start menu. And there we go, we see that the theme has now changed. And it's a little bit more, more readable, hopefully. So if we go into Retro Pi, we can see here, um, that we can actually see the, the, the menu items uh, a lot nicer. Now, when you install additional games like uh, Game Boy, um, ZX Spectrum, um, MAME, etc., you'll see all the different icons, and that will be covered by a separate tutorial. So, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, configuring your Game Boy, uh, your Retro Flag Game Boy style uh, Raspberry Pi, and hopefully, see you in the next video.